I've got type 1 diabetes, which basically, for those people that don't know, in a nutshell, means that my pancreas just can't be arsed, and I've got to step in and do its job for it, which means monitoring my blood glucose level and injecting insulin into my system. Now, to monitor your blood glucose, you need a blood glucose monitor. Now, I'm big into gadgets, so I'm always trying to find the latest and greatest device which will make my life a little bit easier. A year and a half ago, I reviewed the AccuCheck Mobile, which was a big step up over the previous devices that I'd been using, but of course, time doesn't stand still. I've finally managed to get hold of a new device, it's called the Freestyle Libra. Now, I've been using it for a fortnight and it really has changed my life. I'll explain a little bit more. The typical blood glucose monitoring system involves pricking your finger, getting a ball of blood on there, and then applying that to the device. On this one, it goes on the bottom here on this little bit of tape that moves around inside. The machine then monitors the level of glucose in the blood sample you've put in it and throws out a number. Now, the 11.1 isn't good, by the way. I'm supposed to be between 4 and 7. Now, the Freestyle Libra doesn't need a blood sample. Well, kind of doesn't. I'll explain more in a moment. But basically, you've got an NFC chip inside a sensor that remains attached to your arm all the time. Put the reader near the sensor, and it'll tell you what your blood sugar level is. So, by the way, that number is from a different time than the early one. They're not giving out different readings. The Freestyle Libra is not a cheap system. The starter pack at £160 includes the reader and two sensors. And there is a big waiting list for this as well. It's taken me almost four months to get to the Front of the list so I could finally order mine. Now the sensors cost just under £60 but you can get VAT relief on that if you do suffer from diabetes so they're just over £50 a piece really however at that price you really want to make sure you put them on properly because it's a one-time deal if you get it wrong that's £50 down the drain so I'm going to show you how to do it now. Inside the box you get the applicator, which is the thing I'm opening up now. It's quite tight to open up, and that's because there's an adhesive pad in the top of there, so it's got to remain airtight. That's the adhesive pad on the right there. Now, we attach that to the sensor, which is the thing in this airtight box here, and you line those two things up together and push them into one another. You'll hear a click, and that means it's primed and ready to go. You'll see the lines on the right there, how they line up as well. That's just what you should be lining up when you're putting it together. So it's ready to go now. It's spring-loaded, and if we look on the right-hand side, which is the bit we need, there you can see in the middle there's a bit of a needle or perhaps a filament coming out of the middle, and yes, it does go subdermal. It's not just a nice patch that goes on the outside of your skin. That has to go under your skin to read the blood glucose. Now, the sensor's supposed to go in the back of your arm, as per picture number one there, but you'll see on picture number two, the guy's swabbing his arm over the top, and then he's going to put it on like that. Well, I did it that way. I ended up with the sensor on the side of my arm, and every time I slept on it, it felt uncomfortable. So I'm doing it my own way. I'm going underneath, up and under, and this is how it goes on. I'll just show you now. It looks quite scary, but to be honest, didn't feel that. It's a bit of a shock. You get it like a click sound, but I didn't feel it going in. Um, and that's it there for 14 days. That pad's going to remain on the arm. And as you can see there, it's water resistant as well. So these little bits here, these bits of plastic, all those go in the bin or in the recycling, I should say. You don't need any of those anymore. Now you get your little reader out and you press the button and it says start new sensor. You scan it on the sensor, it says you can't do it for 60 minutes. At least it registers the sensor exists. And then after 60 minutes, as you can see, you can get a reading off it. Notice at the top there it tells you how many days you've got before your sensor ends. And you've got a little graph at the bottom there as well. Now unlike your normal blood glucose monitor, the sensor on this one itself can remember eight hours worth of information. And then when you scan that into the reader, the reader pulls that across and of course adds it to the information in the reader, which it can store up to 90 days. So you get up in the morning, do a scan, it'll tell you what was happening while you were asleep, which is information I didn't have before. And in fact, I've got some worrying data, which is showing that I'm dropping really low sometime after midnight and uh, if you get too low of course you could go into a coma and i'm sleeping right through that so i'm gonna have to do something about eating a little bit of something before i go to bed or adjusting my insulin level or whatever but that's information i didn't have before now let's just have a look what you can do when you've scanned the data we can go into here and we can add bits of information to the scan if we want to we don't have to you can just scan it of course but for example i'm going too high at the moment so i'm going to take some rapid acting insulin so i'll just say i'll take two units of that just for the sake of it we'll click ok as you can see it's a touch sensitive screen generally you can get it to do what you want it to do but you can see there on screen i've got a little needle to show me that i've had some insulin at that point and we can go back on some other history 
data here. Logbook is like the traditional information you get from any normal blood glucose meter with an extra twist. You can see the arrows next to the numbers there. So every time I've wave the reader past the sensor these are those numbers but it's also showing me the trend at that time whether my blood sugar was level or on the way up or on the way down you get sharp up arrows if it's shooting up at the time presumably that's after eating something sweet and the daily graph is particularly interesting because it shows the peaks and troughs during the day the times even when you weren't uh, using your sensor you weren't reading it it's got the information before you read it so you can see that perhaps i was dropping a little bit too low before lunch maybe i had too much for lunch i might need to have more insulin with my lunch there's all this information that's available to me now that wasn't there before in a way it kind of gamifies the whole diabetic process there's a compulsion to try and improve your score obviously 9.0 is not a good average glucose now my hba1c that i got the other week from the doctors for people that know what that is that was 7.1 so i'm obviously uh, going up a little bit and i need to work on that but i've got the data here in front of me to show me what parts of the day i'm going wrong and what I need to do to correct it. I've got a lot more information than I've ever had before. You can see the time in target, I was above 73% of the time. Now you're always going to be above more of the time than not because that's after eating, but I need to get it down from 73%. You can see there, low glucose events. Those are the things I was mentioning before. Slightly worrying events where I'm having hypos whilst I'm sleeping. So I need to do something about that, definitely. And that's information that is really important to me. You can see here on the sensor usage, this is interesting, 22 scans a day. Now, there's no way I'd be able to do that many scans with a traditional blood glucose meter. I'd run out of test strips or test cartridges very quickly. Now, I do quite a bit of driving in my job. In fact, just last week, I did a journey of six hours that took me from Southend up to near Manchester. Now, a journey like that, I'd normally be a little bit concerned in the past as to whether my blood sugar level was getting too low. Um, you can, of course, pull over into services, but sometimes those don't come frequently enough. And also, it is possible to use one of the blood test machines and try do it whilst driving, but it's not advisable. However, the Freestyle Libra is a perfect thing for doing on the go. All you have to do is just tap the screen or tap the button put it under your arm and I can see now I'm 9.7 so I'll be fine to drive for a while and the other thing that's very important about this it actually gives me a trend I can see at the moment that I'm on the way up I've just had my lunch and that's why that's happening so I'm going to keep my eye on that check it doesn't get too high as well but previously with one of these machines you do a test and it'd say you were five and you think well am I five on my way down to four or am I on the way up to six really don't know unless you do another test shortly afterwards and see where the trend's going so the trend is one of the best things about the freestyle libra to me at least it, i know that if it's on the way up then i don't need to test it for a while but testing it every half hour or so is just as easy as doing that under your arm and i'm not taking my eyes off the road at all so there you go that's uh, one of the major benefits of it now you might think I'm wearing a shirt that's so I can get the sensor to uh, go near the uh, machine and it'll be able to pick it up with a NFC chip. But it's not necessarily the case. Uh, it can go through some very thick clothing. Including my, just, wait a sec, including my motorcycle jacket. And notice I've got my gloves on here, which uh, you'd not need to take off, of course, to test your blood. But through my jacket, I could get a reading there as to what my blood is. And it's a good job I did that the other day because I was just about to set out on the bike. And if you're a motorcyclist, you'll know that uh, before you get out on the bike, you get all your gear on, you get a bit warm before you manage to get out on the road. So I was just thinking, am I warm because I've got all my gear on or because my blood sugar's low? I was going out to test a camera on the bike. So just before I set off, I tested it under my arm with all my gear on and it said I was four, which meant I had to take everything off again, have something to eat, wait 45 minutes before I could go out. But at least I found out. Worst thing I could have done, set out on the bike and then had a bit of a funny turn down the road. So uh, it's paid off already, this device. I apologise for the sound of that last section there. It was a bit too echoey, but I couldn't put a lapel mic on my jacket anyway. I'm sure you understood what I was saying, though. Now, another thing I've thought about, you wake up in the middle of the night, perhaps a call of nature, you want to check what your blood sugar level is. No need to turn on the lights and annoy everyone in the house. It has got a nice illuminated screen, and, of course, it's very easy to find the sensor on your arm in the dark. And, of course, that screen actually is quite good to use as a torch to find your way back to bed as well. Now, the Freestyle Libra does have a traditional 
testing strip mechanism on the bottom. I haven't got any strips for that, but I do like to keep my strips separate in a separate device. So I'm still using the AccuCheck Mobile if I need to test my blood sugar. And at times I have checked it just to see that the thing's right. It's always been very accurate. The only time you'll really need a blood sugar tester is if you get a hypo a really low hypo because at that point the libra is unable to check your blood sugar properly it'll tell you you're having a hypo but it won't be able to tell you exactly how bad it's got so you do need to test blood for that now throughout the video i've been using it with the sound on to demonstrate it but in real life i use it with the sound off and just have a vibration on there and that enables me to tell when i've got a reading just by moving it over my arm without annoying everyone in the office and of course you've also got the option to put your own target range in here mine set at four to seven of course you can set your own in there now you can only wear a sensor for 14 days at which point it stops giving readings it tells you when it's going to run out on the screen and gives you flash up warnings when it's getting near to the time so here's how you remove one you just pull it off your arm i know this looks a bit disgusting but believe it or not i didn't feel anything there at all and it doesn't look nice underneath but one wash to get rid of all the sticky stuff later and a little bit of scar tissue in the middle and we're back to normal again now the filament thing as you can see here is actually flexible you're not putting a, a solid needle into your arm that does bend around with your arm i'll just take this apart just to show you exactly what's in here because i am intrigued myself well that's the part with the three bits on that attaches to this part here as you can see there there we can see there's a battery inside that so i'll just uh, take those bits to pieces that's traditional watch battery few little bits of electronics presumably there's some memory in there as well so that's what's inside it miracle really now the device itself does have a little usb micro port on here that enables you to charge it of course which you might need to do a bit more frequently than some devices because of the big screen but also you can get into the settings or get reports off here and these are the kind of things you might need to take to your health professional uh, print some stuff out and uh, you can get some really nice reports out of here. I'll just flick through a few different ones of these to demonstrate. Now, the software is downloadable from the Freestyle Libra website, and the software for this particular device is available in Windows and for the Mac. And of course, this is the Mac one that I'm showing you here, but I'm sure it looks the same on both devices. Really nice piece of software, seems to work really well. Now, I know this is going to sound a little bit implausible, but I nearly forgot to mention how it feels, because I know that's going to be at the forefront of what most people are thinking about. Well, to be honest, it hardly feels of anything. The only time I notice I'm wearing it is if I bang something against it, and then it feels a little bit like someone's poking you with a pin. But other than that, for the vast majority of the time, it feels of nothing at all. Now, of course, I'd prefer it if the sensors were cheaper. But then again, I think I'd prefer it if everything was cheaper. Sometimes, though, you just have to pay the going rate, especially when it comes to your health. And besides which, these things cost a fraction of the price of the only other device on the market that does anything remotely similar. And sometimes the screen on the reader is a little bit unresponsive to finger touches. And I wish there was a way to adjust that scale. So 21 wasn't at the top. I'm more interested in the sort of 3 to 15 range. I've also managed to scratch the screen a little bit because they didn't supply it with a protective sleeve, which would have been nice. But those are all just really minor niggles. I've got to say that this thing has actually changed my life for the better. It's not often you can buy a gadget that really does improve your life, and this is one such occasion. Anyway, that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.